Welcome to a summary of the Federal Milk Marketing Order 33, and this is Dr. Lawrence Jones, and I'm recording this on July 20th. Uh, this is sponsored by Nobis AgriScience and in uh, combination with uh, BallCam. So it's been a while since I've given you an update because the market has just been kind of on a silly downward trend. Uh, but uh, Ben did ask me to get you one here, so I thought I would kind of start by talking about where we're at and uh, where we're headed in uh, milk prices. So here's the 50-50 blend, and I've taken this back to you know 2018 or so, and I'm going to break this into four different scenarios. Here in 2019, and I, I distinctly remember about December of 2019, listening to some podcasts, the rural radio saying, boy, 2020 is just going to be a phenomenal year. Everything is getting set up right for the dairy. Uh, you know, we're reducing cow numbers and uh, prices are going up. This is going to be phenomenal. And then, uh, bang, the pandemic hit and it just created a whole lot of chaos. Uh, prices, you know, swung from, you know, down here to way up here. And so it just created a number of supply chain issues. And then we slowly came out of this, you know, here at the end. Then we jumped into this issue of Russia invading Ukraine. Supply chain issues were still tight. And, you know, prices just continued going up. Several things happened during that period. And I think we have to really go back and look at it. Number one was cheese stocks. And so this was that period back here. And in fact, we had raised cheese stocks to over 1.5 billion pounds. Now, this scale is on a per day basis, but uh, just phenomenally high cheese stocks. And if we look at kind of what's going on right now, this is a graph where I plot out 12-month rolling production and disappearance numbers, kind of like your rolling herd average. And what's interesting is this latest data would suggest that we're actually having a higher demand, more disappearance than production. And that just doesn't make sense for what the status of the industry is. But let's go back and look at this cheese stocks. Since a year ago, we've pulled about 100 million pounds of cheese out of cold storage. And until we get done uh, reducing these cold storage numbers, uh, we're just going to continue to have a, a glut of cheese. Now, why did we build these up? And we've got to come back and ask that question because back then inflation was running high, interest rates were still low, there was some supply chain issues. And so again, why wouldn't you put cheese in cold storage as an inflation hedge? Well, now all of a sudden inflation is cooling down, interest rates are going up, and so we got to pull that back out. And one of the things that you know I want to get people to start thinking about is things like cold storage have always been thought as, you know, we stuff it in there only if we can't sell it, kind of a place of last resort. And I'm not so sure that's true anymore. I think uh, the stocks are going to be used a little bit of an inflation hedge, a little bit of price hedging, and some of these sorts of things. Same time, we were significantly raising cow numbers. And uh, that has come down now. And, but I am completely against the industry on this issue because everybody is talking about the fact that we are calling more cows than we were a year ago because the week ending July 1st, you know, we slaughtered 59,000 cows. And the overall scenario in this industry is cow numbers are coming down because we're just calling year over year more than we were. But we have more cows than we did a year ago. And so what I do is I put this back on a percentage basis. Again, as a dairyman, you don't care how many cows you called. You want to know what your call rate is. And so right now we're running right between 32 and 33% slaughter rate uh, in the nation. If we have you know 59,000 cows a week slaughtered and 9.4 million cows. So we take 33%, uh, for example, let's add another 7% for dads. That gets us at a 40% turnover rate. And generally, herds are running about uh, 0.8 heifers per cow, and that's going to give us a 40% uh, turnover rate. So I see cow numbers actually as being fairly steady, and we'll know that uh, later this afternoon with the milk production report. All right, so now kind of what's going on. And so we've just been in this downward trend. We're uh, cleaning up the cold storage and uh, we're 
you know, got excess cow numbers. And this is where I get in a little bit of trouble because uh, when I look at these prices, uh, 2023 looks like on a 50-50 blend basis, we're going to be at $17.68 or $5.53 below last year. And that's why, you know, dairymen are, are screaming. But I'm afraid that we may actually be needing to compare this back to 2021. So we're going to take this part of the data out and say that was not realistic. Uh, that was more a war premium left over from a uh, pandemic. And in fact, we're dollar ten ahead of where we were in 2021. And so I keep coming back and asking the question, you know, should we be comparing ourselves to last year, in which case we're down five and a half dollars? Or should we be comparing ourselves to two years ago, in which case we're up a dollar ten? A couple other things have been going on at the same time, and I think these are very significant. So one of the things that we look at is the production of cheese and what percentage of that is Italian cheese versus American cheese. And American cheese would include cheddar. And most people don't realize that historically, Italian cheese is running about 43% of the cheese where American cheese is about 40. But look what's happening right now. We have kind of an inversion of this scenario. These have been coming together, but now it has gone inverted. We are making more American cheese than we are Italian cheese. And again, what's the significance of that? Well, our milk price is based purely on American cheese. Italian cheese does not go into the milk price calculation. So if we're going to be making more American cheese, we'd better be getting rid of it or it's going to end up on the spot market and driving down uh, prices overall. And at the risk of um, doing something I probably shouldn't, here is the daily cheese production. And we did build this new plant uh, in your backyard in Michigan. And that was seen as kind of a great thing for the industry. We're going to, you know, use up a bunch of milk. But at the same time, this plant is producing a million pounds of cheese a day. And if we look at where this was introduced, exactly right here as to where we were on uh, cheese production, now just that plant alone has taken us up significantly in the trend line. And that wouldn't be so bad except look at the map of what's coming online in the next uh, couple of years. Uh, just a tremendous amount of, of cheese plants uh, being built, and uh, that's, I think, a real issue for the industry. If we're going to make more cheese, we'd better have a way to get rid of it. All right, so let's look at order 33 a little bit. Uh, your statistical uniform price was 1708. Uh, again, lower than New York, a little bit higher than uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, a lot lower than uh, the Southeast. But part of that is uh, what's called the adder because in the Northeast, we're going to add $3.25, and we're going to take away a much higher location adjustment than you do with a $2 adder. So part of that difference is just that uh, mathematics within the industry. So what I like to look at is how they change from month to month. And so you were down about $1.13. Uh, and a lot of this is going to be dependent upon what happened to the different classes? So class one came down $1.56. So that really hurt the southeast. Class three came down $1.20. That uh, kind of hurt you guys. And, and Minnesota, Wisconsin, they came down $1.22. Whereas in the northeast, where we're a blend of everything, we came down only about $0.85. Cents. And so, again, this is your statistical uniform prices uh, for Order 33 plotted out through 2019. And where we are today is actually on the high side of values prior to uh, this run up here. And so, as we said, you were 1708 uh, with a $2.17 PPD, and that was down $1.13 from uh, last month. So here is our class three utilization, and uh, part of the statistical uniform prices are going to be uh, on the utilization and how much depooling you have. 
and you can see for class three, you guys have been running over kind of 40% here throughout 2022. And right now you're up to 52, 53%. And again, class three came down the worst. It's the lowest price. You know, so that's not necessarily a good thing. Now this can go up for two reasons. Number one, you're making more cheese in the, the area, uh, i.e. A, a new cheese plant, or you're depooling class four. And if we look at class four, you've significantly uh, depooled that. So we're down to only 4% uh, class four. The problem with depooling is we really can't look at your statistical uniform price and know how much of the price change has been due to an added cheese plant that's uh, raising you class three or depooling uh, that is also raising class three. The other uh, story that continues to be held is uh, components. Uh, your fat this June was 393. A year ago was a little higher, 396. Not significant. But we're continuing to have higher lows and we're continuing to have higher highs. So again, components are continuing to go up. Same for protein. You're 314 this month, 31 last year, and higher lows and higher highs on uh, both of those. So let me just kind of venture into what uh, we think is going on with the industry, and, and this is where I get a little bit nervous. So this is a graph of the futures contracts uh, as of last night. The orange are actually the component, if you have nonfat, dry milk, butter, whey, these sorts of things. The blue are the actual contracts. And what I want to look at is this November price relative to the spot market plus 40 cents because I'm going to argue to you that historically when we finish a month up and you go back and look at the spot market you know for the weeks that contribute to the pricing there's about a 40 cent number over top of the spot market to get this November so here's the spot market and I've already added the four cents in for cheese which gives us that 40 cents we need cheese to come up 30 cents I'll let that sink in for a minute. We need cheese to come up 30 cents in the next three months to be able to get the November price to where it is. And we need that November price to come up $3.27 to meet what the futures currently are. $2.83 of that is going to be due to cheese. And whey has also got to come up. So we're expecting whey to come up $0.08. Cents, and uh, right now, whey has not been moving up. Nonfat dry milk and butter are actually holding in pretty good, and uh, so class four is right on target. All right, so let's look at the global uh, situation. This last global dairy trade came down 1%. That was a little bit unexpectedly. Cheddar came down 10%, and that was significant. This is what the prices are in U.S. terms. Here's our spot market as of yesterday. So on the global trade, Butter is at 209, spot market's 256, so we are not going to be exporting butter. Cheddar's at $1.80, the uh, spot market's $1.60 basically, and for blocks, it takes 20 cents to get it offshore. So the idea that we're going to be exporting cheese is, uh, is, is really tough at these prices. Nonfat dry milk's $1.21. Uh, Spot mark was $1.10. Also, it takes $0.20, cents, so we're going to expect the nonfat dry milk to come down. And on the world market, right now, whole milk powder is uh, $14.07. So prices are significantly lower than they are in the U.S. So let's look at uh, kind of what's going on on these uh, spot markets. So this is a graph of the individual spot markets uh, with a trend line built into it. And here's where prices started falling overall. So we clearly have reached a bottom here recently. And so we're coming up. My concern is, look at this blip up here. Uh, that was a situation uh, back in the spring when two cheese plants had an issue. Uh, they got on the wrong side of something and they were buying you know, for about a week and then they stepped out. And in fact, I went and drew this extended line here and where we ended up at the bottom is that same uh, trend that we had before. And so my question is, is this blip up 
similar to this blip up. Is it uh, going to be real or not? So everybody keeps talking about exports. So here are the cheese exports uh, for May down significantly. We exported 6% of our cheese. And until that gets up, you know, I've never seen it over 8%. But here is another story that people forget to tell. We imported 3% of the total cheese. So our actual exports were only net of about 3%. So that's not significant. Non-fat dry milk has really been kind of flat here. The blue line is the global dairy trade. We are normally 20 cents below that. Non-fat dry milk's been coming down, but it still probably has a bit more to go to hit this 20 uh, cent number. Now, the thing that's been really resilient and really strong is butter. Uh, so this graph, the blue lines are the National Dairy Sales Reports. The red dots are the individual spot market. And so we can see that butter is 243, 240, 242, 246. So it's been very good on the National Dairy Sales Report. It's recently kind of jumped up. The green line are my estimates for the next uh, National Dairy Sales Report. So we can ignore those. But right now, butter is in that 250 range. So... That is very, very strong. That's holding up class four. All right, just real quick on grains. So this is a uh, channel for the next 12 month. Uh, it's a rolling 12 month average. Corn really came off of this uh, resistance at 240 and it's found support at 180. And so this is, uh, these numbers are as of Friday, but uh, we're right in that 180 a ton. And basically sideways, if you want to look at it that way. And soybean meal had resistance at 430, and it found support around 390, and it's right back into this channel somewhere, uh, 390, 400 at this point. The story of that is, uh, I was talking to a dairyman last night, and he says, man, it's these milk prices that are hurting us. Uh, it's not that feed prices have gone up significantly, and that's exactly right. If we look at our 50-50 blend uh, from back in the spring, it was $24. You know, now we're at 17, pushing 18, somewhere in there. That's uh, per 100 weight. And if we think about an 80-pound herd, we were at $16 for margin. Now we're at $14 for margin. That's all due to milk price. That's not due to uh, grains. So the big thing that's a Kind of everybody's talking about where the grain market is this drought that's out here in the Midwest. And in fact, in Michigan, the thumb is uh, reasonably dry and the northern part is uh, reasonably dry. But this is really uh, forcing grain prices up along with uh, the Black Sea deal being canceled by Russia. Uh, Russia's hit several grain storage facilities in uh, Ukraine. I just got a text that uh, India has now stopped all exports of rice. And so lots of things are going to be driving feed price up here in the, in the short term. And the thing to keep an eye on in the, uh, the weather is the sea surface temperatures. And uh, I watch this every week. And this is our El Nino starting to develop where it's getting warm off of here. But this cold water was supposed to be gone, and it's not. And we've got very strong warm water above it uh, just off of the coast of Alaska there. What this is doing is setting up a ridge over the mid-central uh, area, and that's going to cause some significant drought. Also, this warm water over here. So when you look at these sea surface temperatures and you see bright reds and bright blues that says that things are, are going to be very unusual and very extreme. All right, so that's it for me. I hope everybody stays safe this summer and uh, I look forward to getting you another report next month.